Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the latest alarm in trade data as the Labour Party points out that exports to the EU of meat and fish have declined very badly since Brexit. And no, we're not compensating by selling more to the rest of the world. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So I will just start off by saying it's fine at the moment, but if you hear a hum, it's someone cutting their grass. I'm sorry, I've waited an hour and a half for them to stop. They've finally done it. If it starts up again, there's no way they can't have cut their grass. They're basically just stroking the lawn with their lawnmower at this point. But anyway, latest trade data. And it's always the case these days, isn't it? Trade data comes out, paints a picture of losers instead of gainers in this country. Brexiteers keep attempting the usual fiddles of comparing exports to when the world was locked down in 2020 or by ignoring the effects of inflation. But this isn't washing with those in the industry. They're at it again. The headline figure is that our exports of meat and fish to the EU have halved since Brexit. So let's, first of all, we'll leave the report and Labour's reason for pointing it out. And I want to take a proper look here. See, the article, which I'll link, does make certain comparisons which the government complain are unfair. And I'm going to back the government up here and say, yes, yes, they are. There is an attempt in the article to compare December 2020 data with the, you know, because that was the last year before we left the single market, with March 2023. But exports are not steady across the year, so it's not valid to compare a December with a March in any year. Mind you, if they'd carried out a valid comparison, March to March or December to December, it would, it would not be any better. Apart from anything else, I mean, we shouldn't be using 2020 anyway. COVID artificially suppressed trade, especially in Britain, because we spent a lot of the year in lockdown because the government refused to mitigate against infection spread. No, we use 2019 as our base. The ONS uses 2019 as its base. This is the last year of trade inside the EU. It's really that simple. So let's look at some proper comparisons, which the government possibly cannot possibly complain about. So if you look at the ONS data, you will see that the value of meat exports to the EU in 2019, the last year we were in the EU, we exported £1.548 billion worth of meat. In 2022, the, the latest fall year of data that we have, it was 1.389 billion. Now, already this is a drop, but it's actually worse than that because of our old friend, inflation. If we were to compare both years again, but with the 2022 value of the pound, basically it doesn't matter what value of the pound we use, as long as it's fixed, as long as it's equivalent between the two years. So we'll take the 2022 value of the pound. So our exports in 2019 would have actually been 1.747 billion to the 1.389 billion in 2022. That is a 20% drop right there. And there's no evidence that the situation is getting better because although 2022 is the last full year of trade data, the ONS very kindly provides data as you like. Do you want it quarterly? You can have it quarterly. Do you want it monthly? You can have it monthly. I can compare the first four months of 2019, 2022 and 2023 very easily with the most up-to-date analysis. So using the April 2023 value of the pound now, so as up-to-date as our trade data is, the April 2023 value of the pound, the first four months of 2019 saw us export 0.65 billion pounds worth of meat to the EU in 2023 money. In 2022, it was 0.53 billion, so significantly less. But in the first four months of this year, it went down even further to 0.42 billion. That is less by a lot. So what we're seeing here is it's getting worse. It's not like, because you can imagine some things if you're looking at limited data, and this is going to get more stark as each year goes past. It's like, oh, we had this dip. Oh, but it was COVID, not Brexit. You understand? COVID, not Brexit. We had the, it was COVID and Brexit. We had this dip and then it's climbing again. So it'll climb, it'll carry on getting, getting no, it's getting worse. You know, and in order to avoid going over all the detailed figures for fish, I will just point out, you see the same thing with exports of fish as well. In fact, it's worth pausing to consider something. Think about, before we left, what were the industries that Brexiteers kept highlighting as being the big, big winners from leaving the EU? What came to my mind was farmers, fishermen and car manufacturers. Well, exports of, of food, fish and cars 
are all down compared with when we before we left the EU. Well done there, well done. But this is specifically about meat and fish and it's easy to see why it would be such a problem. See, in many ways, these are like the worst goods to try and export as a third country. Because unless you freeze them, you're gonna lose freshness. If you freeze them, you cut out a load of customers who don't want, they'll get cheap frozen cuts from somewhere else. So they don't want that. You need health certificates on top of all the usual Brexit paperwork needed to be able to export. You need refrigerated transport in order to get them delivered. We have problems with a critical shortage of drivers, a critical shortage of workers in other parts of the supply chain as well. We're also lacking the cold storage to be able to manage with delays in getting the goods transported. Everywhere you look, there are problems which make either producing or selling meat and fish much more difficult. So of course exports are down. And it's still not over. See, right, right from the moment we left the single market and I was discussing the immediate impacts because they were immediate, I kept saying that this is just the beginning. See, some people will have imagined, because the government tried to get them to think this, that, right, we've left the single market now, so then that's that. Okay, yeah, it's hit us, we get that. But then businesses will adapt, and okay, maybe some will never be able to adapt, but, you know, our trade, that we'll start to claw our way back. We'll, we'll start to work our way as a third country, and each year it will just get back to being better. Even if those people still accept we will always be behind where we would have been if we'd stayed inside the single market. But this was not the case. First of all, we still haven't fully Brexited even now. We did it in phases and we're still going through those phases. It was done in phases so as not to alarm the public. Phase by phase, we are still raising trade barriers. They're still going up. But it isn't even just that. The EU are not fixed in time. They continue to adapt themselves in order to counter the threat from our divergence. See, when Brexiteers were complaining about checks in 2021, there's no need for these checks, no need at all. Our standards are just as high as the EU's. Yeah, at the start of 2022, we'd only just left the single market. But, well, there's several reasons, by the way, why there would still be checks even then. But one of the easiest to explain is our standards started falling almost immediately. Every time we lower our standards, as we have been doing, in terms of what's allowed into our market, we haven't been lowering the standards of food production in this country, but in terms of the food we allow to be imported from elsewhere, especially with, for example, the Australian New Zealand deal, the wider CPTPP membership. But every time we lower standards, the EU needs to ramp up checks to make sure their own market isn't threatened. So every year that goes by, it gets harder, not easier for British food producers, especially of meat and fish to export to the EU. So it is no surprise that it's not just that the exports are lower now than they were in 2019. The exports are lower in 2023 so far than they were in the same period of 2022. The first four months of 2023 has seen lower exports of meat and fish compared to the first four months of 2022. And do you know what? When we get the next bit of trade data, I'll be able to say that of the first five months and the first six months. We'll get to the end of the year of the of that year. It's going down. So what's the solution? Well, rejoining the EU would sort it all out. Of course it would. However, not legally or politically possible in the short term. So we need more practical arrangements because this is hurting jobs and industry immediately, right now. Like, there'll be nothing left to save if we just sit on our hands and wait until we can rejoin. Labour have for quite some time talked about both alignment of standards and a veterinary agreement. Something farmers definitely want. How much would this help? Well, if you think about the two main issues that we have in exporting, the first is all the paperwork, the second would be the checks. That's assuming you can export at all. Remember, there are some things that we just will not be able to export. But if, when you can export, paperwork and checks are the main barriers, we could say. So we can't really do much about the paperwork outside the single market. The Tories keep talking about making the process of generating the paperwork quicker and easier, but that's all it's been, talk. Why didn't they design a quick and easy system for when we left the single market, huh? They had years. Why didn't they do that? Why didn't, hadn't they already sorted it all out? So no, beyond the possibility of actually making maybe a more user-friendly system, which doesn't seem to be emerging at the moment, the red tape remains if we are outside the single market and customs union, because there's paperwork for customs, even if we were in the single market. But checks are different. How much of an impediment checks are is based on risk. If there's a high risk of substandard goods passing from Britain to the EU, then the EU will carry out more checks in order to mitigate the risk. If we drive our standards back up to EU levels and satisfy everyone that we are carrying out robust internal inspections of our own to maintain those standards, 
Then we pose a lower risk to the EU single market and checks can be lighter. They won't go away, but if we can reduce them, then we increase traffic flow, reduce delays in getting fresh food to the European markets. Or we can stick with the Tories, keep driving our standards lower and lower, with them using the excuse that lower standard food is cheaper and people need cheaper food thanks to the cost of living crisis. Who caused the cost of living crisis? Oh, well, we did that, but never mind. And of course, completely crush our farming and fishing industries over the next five years to the point where there'll be nothing left. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.